My favourite, my favourite seasons are always fall and spring. You know, fall, it's not too hot. You got a nice gentle breeze flowing through the the trees. Nice colours. Look like autumn, like fall. It's just right. It's got just the right temperature. Winter's too damn cold. You freeze your ass off. Summer's too damn hot. But spring and fall, they're just a nice temperature. And it's summer and it's too hot and I don't like it. You know what else I don't like? This. This thing. So let, let's let's talk about this. I mean, you're sure you've seen the title and you're like, what? Spiral, that's not fair. It's not even out yet. How can you say a game's dead before it's not even out? Well, I mean, you know, at time of editing this, at time of recording, I'll tell you what it is right now. Let me refresh the presentation at time of recording and then you know you'll see the edited version but right now at time of recording it's got 145k dislikes oof oof and i'm sure that that will go up by the time we actually get to the uh editing process and the thing is let's let's talk about this because the thing is it's not even that it was that bad all the comments, you see, let's let's talk about the three reasons why it failed. I mean, that's the title of the video, why it has failed. It has already failed. It failed for three key reasons. And the first reason is, I guess, one of preference, one of taste. If you like it, fair dues, but, you know, again, considering the reception, not really. But the first point is over ambition, over over hyping something that was never going to live up to the expectations of saving this for a whole week. Or because a few days ago, about four days ago, we had the original Pokemon Direct, and we had two mobile trash. We you know you had like, oh, you can clean your teeth. Ooh, clean your fucking teeth, catch Pikachu in your mouth. Hey, Pikachu, do you like war? No. Too bad, here we go. Yeah, no. So, you know, you had a, you had a little bit of, okay, stupid. But overall, for that Direct, it was met with a very positive reception. The Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC, the Isle of Armor, fixed a lot of issues and a lot of problems with uh, the original Pokemon. You know, the whole bring back the National Dex movement, which just went absolutely fucking stupid and the argument got muddied, is now lessened because a lot of the issues have been fixed. A lot of the Pokemon uh, have been re-added. A lot of the animations, they've added those animations that they promised they were going to add. they polished up a few of the graphics, you know, so... Overall, the Isle of Armour was met with a positive reception. And then the bigger thing from that Direct was the announcement of Pokemon Snap 2. And people have been wanting that for ages. And when we saw um, the, the graphical style that Ban Bandai Namco put forward, it set the house on fire. It set the internet on fire. The roof was blown way the fuck off because... That, Jesus Christ, that looks beautiful. It looks absolutely stunning. Looks fantastic. And then we get to the end. And this was the first problem. Expectation. So when the original presentation ended, you're like, but that's not all. In four days, we're going to have another Pokemon Direct. And we're going to announce a big project. I emphasize that, they didn't say it like that, but, you know, just saying that word, big, we've got one more thing and it's going to be a big project. So, naturally, after Pokemon Snap got shown, after we saw these absolutely stunning, beautiful graphics, after we had the, uh, the Isle of Armor expansion, which has been very well received, people's expectations are no longer down here, they're way way up here now a lot of people said Sinnoh remake gen 4 remake a lot of people want the gen 4 remake I have come to accept the fact that diamond and pearl will never get a remake if you're watching this and you're like no no 
Considering the Pokemon Company's actions and the way that they are now approaching mainline series games, there will never, I repeat, there will never, ever, be a Gen 4 remake, ever. Not to what you want it, anyway. You know, maybe years and years down the line, you might get a Let's Go Sinnoh. You know, with the with a more chibi art style, or a little bit more of a um, downgraded art style. But if you're expecting some super big, huge, massive overhaul like Sword and Shield, you will never get that Gen 4 remake. You, it's never going to happen. It's a pipe dream. Give up on it. So, I, I, I give up on that. And I'm thinking, okay, well, the only thing that could be bigger than the Isle of Armor is Let's Go Johto. You know, the first Let's Go game, despite having its problems, was very well received. It was a new way to catch Pokemon. It was a new way to introduce a lot of people to uh, the world of Pokemon for the um, Sword and Shield games for people that hadn't played Pokemon. It was a good idea. Now, there are some things that I personally disagree with, like... And I know people are gonna gonna say no, that's not how it works. That is how it works. Like locking Mew behind a fifty dollar paywall, because that's what they did. Because let's face it, that's what she is. Mew is a fifty dollar paywall. Because hey, can I use that Pokeball controller with Sword and Shield? No. Can I use that Pokeball controller? With Breath of the Wild, no. Can I use that Pokeball controller in Mario Odyssey? No. Can I use that Pokemon controller with the Virtual Console fucking red, blue, yellow? No. Can I use it with Pokemon Home? No. You can't. Like, it was used for one game. And where's that Pokeball controller now? There it is, sitting in a drawer, gathering dust. Not able to do anything. But don't worry, that, that Pokeball controller will be compatible with uh, Pokemon games for years to come. Thank you for the fucking lie. And But hey, you spent that $50 and you got your fucking Mew. You got that $50 fucking DLC. You fucking stupid bastard. Mm. Mm, well, so I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that. And you know... The, what they could you what they could do to mitigate that what they could do to obviously uh, alleviate that issue is what's this big reveal let's go Johto Pokemon go was very well received I liked it it was a new way to catch Pokemon I thoroughly enjoyed uh, let's go uh, Kanto I just call it Kanto I know it was Pikachu and Eevee but if we're going to be like saying Sinnoh and Johto and all the other regions, I'll just call it Kanto. Well, you know, a lot of people were were very warming, very welcoming to Let's Go Kanto. It had a new way to catch Pokemon. The the Pokeball, when it worked, was fun. Um, and it was very well received. And, you know, again, people weren't against the idea uh, of having the Let's Go series be its own thing and going from Let's Go Kanto to Let's Go Johto to Let's Go Hoenn to Let's Go Sinnoh. So what could be bigger than the DLC? Well, as I just said, Let's Go Johto. Let's get... Because there's still Pokemon that we can't get in Sword and Shield. You know, they're they're re-adding Pokemon with the, the Sword, the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. There's some Mythicals miss it, missing. Where are we going to get Celebi from? Where are we going to get Lugia from? Where are we going to get Ho-Ho from? Now, I know there is a chance that they might be coming back in the Crown Tundra. As, like, a, a couple, of, a bit of the list has been leaked. And there was, like, the Ultra Beasts or something. But, like, yeah. So, there's, there's a chance that Lugia and Ho-Ho can obviously come back in the Crown Tundra. But... Look, we've got we've got Suicune, Entei, Raikou, the unknowns to bring them back into the Pokedex. We can make an event for Celebi. That would be big news. That'd be amazing news. So no matter which camp you're in, if you're in Let's Go Johto or the Sinnoh remakes that are probably never gonna happen and I'd give up on that dream. Either camp, your expectations are up here. And 
when you're saying, oh, we're saving this, we're, we're, we're saving this last final game, this super mega game that we've been working on as next week's big reveal, gets people talking, it gets people chatting, it gets people's expectations going right up there. And when you announced a Pokemon <laughs> League of Legends, because that's what it is, everybody's uh, expectations were shattered and everybody's motivations went through the floor. Excuse me. Had to sneeze there. Cut that out. But, uh, yeah, everybody's expectations fell right through the floor and everybody disconnected. No matter what you were saying after that, expectations were gone engagement was gone nobody cared it wasn't let's go johto and it wasn't the sino remakes it wasn't something that people cared about but that was okay that was okay because hey let's face it we knew we weren't getting sino and let's go johto was a stretch okay fine whatever whatever it's a pokemon moba it's not what anybody wanted but whatever it's fine Listen, it's fine, it's fine, whatever, ne next song, next song. Oh, nothing makes me happier than thinking about your corpse. Do -do 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 -do. What, what, why are, you, why are you looking at me like a bunch of, bunch of little idiots there? <laughs> no, but, um, fine, whatever. It's not what we wanted, but whatever. As long as we can see some engaging gameplay, as long as we can see something of worth it's fine and then we got the thing we got the information which are the two main reasons it failed because if you like MOBAs fine you could get into this whatever I'm not judging you on whether you like MOBAs or not my first point about expectations and hype is a moot point maybe maybe you're one of those people that's like oh man I love all these comments of all these people whining about a Sinnoh remake with when they're never going to get one. I mean, I kind of have to agree. I know they're never going to get one, but that there'll also be people being like, how dare you, Spyro? How dare you say that we're never going to get one? But that, that, it doesn't matter, because again, that's taste. But then they did two things, and these are the two big main factors why this game failed, why it got over 100k dislikes, why it's being mean to hell on... Twitter and the YouTube comments and Facebook and every media site and you know take it away Mr. Krabs all right here we go I give you Krabby Land Did you catch that logo? Did you, did you catch that logo? Did you catch the uh, Did you catch the vibes that they were picking up? Was it subtle enough for you? Here, let me spell it out. So the first the first thing that I will bring up is free to start game. Free to start. Let, let, let's get all the images up again. Free to start. Free to start. Free to start. Free to start. It's, it's Elder Scrolls Blades, it is Mario Run, it's Mario Kart Tour. It is, it's gonna have microtransactions. And, not only is it gonna have microtransactions, but, look at that image right there. All right, cut, cut the video a second. Sorry, this is a post edit, we have to add more. The story's unfolding. Oh, Pokemon, Pokemon did not like the fact that people did s dislike that. So now, they're using underhanded tactics to try and remove all the dislikes from the video as the story unfolds. Me and Spyling cottoned on and, you know, all the YouTubers have cottoned on. So I needed, in, in my video, the picture of the guy on the mobile phone. You know, I was like... This is me going back through my footage, by the way. Because I was like, oh, you know, there, there's the, the phone image right there. But it's like, oh, I need the guy physically holding the mobile phone. I'm going to go back to the the 
video and get the picture of the guy holding the mobile phone. Now, as you can see from this video, I'm now sitting at one, 171 dislikes. And then we go here. Wait a minute. 132 dislikes. Where have they gone? Hold the fuck up a second. Hold up. You see it? 2.3 million views. 2.3. Bring up the image. 2.4. Well, let's click my Twitter so we can see them side by side constantly. Keep looking at this number in the bottom left. 2.4. 2.3. 2.4. 2.3. 2.4. 2.3. One aired 22 hours ago. One aired more than 22 hours ago. Mmm. Oh, hello. What is this spice that you're doing, Pokemon? And apparently, according to Spiling, it's now even less. It's now even less. But let's let's just catch on to the comments because I didn't believe that they would remove dislikes, but I refreshed the page after one minute and it went down by 1k. 1k. Shame on yous. Had to dislike again because they are removing a bunch of them. Hmm. Hmm. Let's, let's see if ours goes down. 132? Oh, no, it stayed at 132. But naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty fucking Pokemon. Did you think that nobody was going to fucking catch on? Did you really think that <laughs> they're deleting the dislikes? Well, I made screenshots, so let's see how many there will be in two hours. They are deleting dislikes a lot. Did they just lower the dislikes? Bruh. Bruh, that's cheap. They are deleting the dislikes. They are deleting the dislikes. It went from 155 to 135. Tencent are already getting their censorship in. Oh boy. Deleting dislikes. What a shame on the Pokemon company. They're starting to remove the dislikes. Did you really think that the internet wouldn't notice? Did you really think that you were going to get away with that? Most people like myself haven't even finished our videos and we need this video as a reference. We need this video for images, for, for things that you said in this video to be used. People haven't even finished their fucking videos so they're going to be looking at this for references and you're already deleting the dislikes to try and make yourself look better. How the fuck did you think you were gonna get away with this? Ten cent buying ten percent of everyone's property. Bro, they are removing the dislikes. What the fuck? Looks like the dislikes are getting deleted to the official Pokemon YouTube channel. Don't be scummy about your like to dislike ratio. This game is simply a huge flop. You've been caught. 40k dislikes are vanished in a few seconds. Wow, they're magicians. <laughs> you should dislike the video just because they removed the dislikes. That's shady business. Yes, it is. They're manipulating the dislikes. They're manipulating the likes and dislikes. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for extra thanks for extra ammunition to use against you. And you know, I, I have to say it as well. I'll agree with a couple of these people, where it's like you know. I'm sorry, but I just love how the whole thing looked back and, you know, people are like, I used to like Pokemon Company. This just proves that you are now, like, it, you were already walking the tightrope. I just need to come out, by the way. And again, like, Joe there, what a shame, Pokemon Company, because you did used to be good. A lot of people used to like you. You were already walking the tightrope. You were already walking the razor's edge with the controversies you started with Sword and Shield, bring back the national decks, the the lie that you told where you're going to add extra animations, and you didn't, and we got the Ocarina of Time tree, you were already walking the tightrope of mistrust right there. But this, this unequivocal, unequivocal proof, there is now unequivocal documented evidence that you're deleting the dislikes! And like, and just like that, there, there, there's another one, just like that. 
50 tier, 50k dislikes. Gone. So you guys know that they are now finding ways to get rid of dislikes. There were 160k. Now it's 130. I actually got it at 170. They're removing dislikes from the comments. I'm so des- they're so desperate. They are so desperate. They were at 160k. This has been bought to you by China and their obedient little puppet. I haven't even got into the 10 cents section yet. I'm still like, when we go back, I will continue where I left off. I will continue with the, the pay to win mobile phone trash. I will be showing all of the microtransactions in many other phone games. I have not even got to the 10 cent bit yet. Not even got to the 10 cent bit yet. I have to add this in. Because now, Pokemon Company, you have inadvertently 100% evidence against you have made yourself just as bad as Activision, just as bad as EA, just as bad as Ubisoft, just as bad as Tencent themselves. You are lying to people. You are now just as bad as Activision and EA, telling lies and manipulating numbers to make yourself look better. So now, Pokemon Company, you have lost all trust across the community. You're already in a dire situation and having trust issues with Pokemon Sword and Shield, and by manipulating the likes and dislikes, you have lost all trust with your entire community. You have just self-destructed, because now anything you say is bullshit. Anything that you say, nobody will take you seriously. You will always forever now look like a liar until you can prove yourself true. You are a dirty liar and a coward until you can prove yourself true. Because you just manipulated the facts, you just manipulated the numbers to try and make it look better than what it was. Just like Activision, just like EA, just like Ubisoft, just like Gearbox. You've done that to yourself, Pokemon Company. And that's a shame, because I had a lot of positive things to say about the Isle of Armour. And I will say, still say positive things about the Isle of Armour. In my review. But. Now that, now that you have shown your true colours. Now, now that you're in 10 cents pocket. And what do I say? Wait till you see the rest of this video. Wait till you fucking see the rest of this video. I say 10 cent destroys things. I, I go off on a big tangent about how they destroyed paladins with OB64. I, I fucking, I fucking said Tencent does that. And not even a day, not even a day, not even a day later. Here's Tencent manipulating the numbers. Here's Tencent manipulating the fucking facts. Here's Tencent fucking it all up. Because that's all Tencent ever does. Bruh. With thousands of dislikes being deleted, someone on YouTube is getting his pocket filled nice. What do they expect to accomplish by deleting dislikes? Seriously. There are already screenshots on Twitter of the video being at a ho over 150k. I've got it at 170k, love. And people have already voiced their complaints. The damage is done. This is not going to fix it. If anything, it's going to get people more mad and less likely to download the game. Is this now a season April Fool's joke? Why are you oversaturating your beautiful franchise with low quality money grabs? Just kindly stop, please. They are deleting dislikes. There was over 170k. Ah, he got the 170k one. I like that one, that's the one I'll leave it off on, I'll come back to that, but they are deleting dislikes. You just make it worse and worse. This reaction shows how low the Chinese parliament, I think that's the, isn't it supposed to be CCP? Chinese corporate parliament has come. Really losing trust in this company. Oh, 
No, because that would be... I think he just spelled it wrong, because it would be TPC, the Pokemon company, but... Yeah, everybody's lost trust in you. They're deleting dislikes. Thanks for not being able to take criticism, Pokemon. You wonder why fans have gotten tired of you for the past five or six years, because it's true. You, you're, you can't take criticism. And, you know, we'll end it off with, with a nice fucking jab. This is more disappointing than a Pokemon evolving into a firefighting type. <laughs> Round of applause. Round of applause, Pokemon. You lying bastards. Anyway, back to... Back to the main part of the video. Back to the rational, reasonable part of the video. But, I mean, you know... Does it matter now? Because we know that they're deleting the dislikes. I don't know. Back to the main part of the fucking video. That's a man playing on his phone. And the very first image we see is also... Play it on your phone. And that's a stigma. You know, we, we saw... Give, the, give them the Diablo Immortal clip. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right? Now, I know what you're thinking. What happened to Diablo? Oh. Ah! 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 Do you guys, do you guys not have phones? Is this an out of fools, out of season April Fool's Day joke? Do you guys not have phones? You have phones, right? Okay, why, why are you, why are you all getting mad? Why, why are you all getting angry? Why are you all getting pissed off because we say it was a phone game? And it's not the fact that it's a phone game. Because that, that, I've spoken to people where... The people remember when mobile gaming had an interesting future. You know, Doodle Jump. Doodle Jump was 50 pence. A dollar. And you had fun with it. No microtransactions. No fucking strings attached. Just take your little doodle man. And you jump. You got Steppy Pants. Just, you know... It's like that weird runner thing where you gotta press W, you know, Q W E R, Quirzed, the Quirzed Racer. I don't know what the game's called. This one, I'm putting an image of it up. You know, you just gotta tap the buttons correctly so Steppy Pants moves. Again, two dollars. No, no bullshit. No strings attached. Nothing. Just, just nice. And you know, one more Million Onion Hotel. No bullshit. No strings attached. One upfront price. You give us five dollars, that's it. You got the game forever, you got all the content, no skins, no loot boxes, no microtransactions, you paid your money, there you go. But then, but then all the scum moved into town. All the little, the little worms come wriggling out the ground and all the, all the little parasites came to suck on the corpse of mobile gaming. And we got King with Candy Crush and its microtransactions. We got Clash of Clans and its microtransactions. And th those were just little. They, they were just like, oh, you know, oh, you, you didn't quite, you didn't quite beat all the candies. You didn't quite all eat all the candies. Hey, give us a dollar. We'll give you uh, ten extra turns. Little, it's just a little tiny thing. But a little tiny thing, a little tiny acorn grows into a big tree. And as as we go through, you know, ooh, Candy Crush, just a couple of, just a dollar, a couple of extra turns. Then it gets to Dungeon Keeper Mobile. Ooh, give us some fucking money. Give us some money and buy some gems. Because it's always gems. You're going to see gems a lot in this f fucking video. But, you know... Ooh, here, here's Dungeon Keeper Mobile. Come on, give me the gems. It's not a game. You're just here to pay. It's pay to win. Come on, pay up for those gems. And then we got Harry Potter Hogwarts Mysteries. Go on, give me the gems. Come on, pay up, you little worms. Consume the gems. And then, we got Raid Shadow Legends. Hey guys, Shadow Man here. I'm here to tell you about my sponsorship with Raid Shadow Legends Bug Spray. Do you want to play a really generic piece of shit mobile game that has no original content whatsoever and has fucking loot boxes in it? Well, this is the game for you. 
and if you use my code, give me money, then you will get 50,000 silver, which actually equates to one single dollar, because silver is completely fucking worthless, and if you want to get anywhere in the game, give me the money for the gems. Ooh, I can feel the gems. I can feel the microtransaction money. And then came Elder Scrolls Blades. Mm. Hey guys, hey, hey guys, it's me. It's me, Todd Howard. It's me, Todd Howard. I'm using, I'm using my charisma voice. You can tell that I'm, I'm just an average guy like you, because this is, this is my charisma voice. And I know you like Skyrim. I, I know you like Skyrim, and you're probably going to buy another copy of Skyrim on the PS5. I, I, so I'm, I'm coming with you today with, uh, with Elder Scrolls Blades. It's, uh, it's a totally new Elder Scrolls experience. And all you got to do is buy the GEMS! Buy the GEMS, yes! Yes, all oh, the gems. And then came Mario Kart Tour. Oh, you want some loot boxes? You want some loot boxes? Mmm, give me those. Go on, look at that, rubies. Oh, we got rubies this time. They're red gems, because it's always gems. Come on, buy some microtransactions. Buy some microtransactions for the gems. Pull the pipes, spin the roulette wheel, enjoy your loot boxes. Then we got Animal Crossing Loot Box Camp. Animal Crossing Loot Box Camp is nothing but loot boxes. Oh boy, oh, but we're not done yet. Then you got Mario Run. Mario Run, you can only play three levels, then they make you pay for the rest of the game. Sorry, they don't make you pay for the rest of the game. They make you pay for one world, and then another world, and then another world. Mm -hmm. So, and the list goes on, by the way. We could go on forever. We, we could just, like, keep going down this line, like, oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, sorry. There was one more. There was one more by Nintendo. I always like to bring this up with Mario Kart Tour and Mario Run. What's the third one? What's the third one that they made? I don't remember. It'll come back to me. I'll, I'll, I'll remember it. But no, you can see the list goes on. Oh, that's it. The one that started it all. Diablo Immortal. Well, no, that didn't start it all. But, you know, that's the one I was, the one that started this entire tangent. Do you guys not have phones? You have phones, right? Why don't you guys have phones? Hey, guess what? It's filled with microtransactions. Give me the money. Give me the money and I will give you the gems. You want the gems. You want the gems. Shiny spot. Sparkly stones! Give me the money and I will give you shiny sparkly stones! So, when people saw the words free to start, mobile game, that was it. It wasn't even the third, well the third thing is a huge, huge factor. But just the fact that you said mobile game, free to start. Everybody's past history with mobile games, you know, Mario Run, Mario Kart Tour, Elder Scrolls Blades, Harry Potter, Hogwarts Mysteries, Dungeon Keeper Mobile, the list goes on. Mobile gaming now has such a huge, nasty, disgusting stigma around it due to what AAA companies have done. They have poisoned the mobile gaming well to the point of no return. You cannot purify that well. And the second, and everybody's got wise to it. You know, back in the day, Dungeon Keeper Mobile, Harry Potter, even, you know, let's go as far as Mario Kart Tour, because, ooh, they, well, that that's Nintendo, and Nintendo are not really the bad guys, but, you know, they can be, and they are, and uh, how how'd you like your gambling boxes, Nintendo? How do you feel that you're just as much of a fucking scumbag as EA, Nintendo? turning kids into gamblers Nintendo with your loot boxes Nintendo because that's what they are Nintendo they're gambling Nintendo and you're just as bad as EA Nintendo don't turn don't try and take the moral high ground because you've got gambling boxes in your game just like EA's got gambling boxes in their game or are you gonna call them surprise mechanics as well just dude for thought but yeah so because of this stigma because of this horrible nasty 
vile little stigma that mobile gaming or the AAA industry has done to mobile gaming, there's no coming back. And the second, like, people were interested. That I'm not saying they were as interested as, like, a Sinnoh remake or Let's Go Johto, but people were genuinely like, okay, well, you know, it's not what we wanted, but we'll still listen to what you have to say. And the second they saw that mobile phone and free to start, boom, snap your fingers. That's it. Gone. All your engagement, all your viewers, just psh, gone. That dislike bar growing at a rapid rate. That was the moment that the dislike bar started growing the second that fucking mobile phone showed up. Because that's what mobile gaming is now. It's mobile trash. It's free to play, pay to win trash. And after all of them, after Elder Scrolls Blades, Mario Kart Tour, Fallout Shelter, Dungeon Keeper Mobile, Candy Crush, Animal Crossing Loot Box Camp, after all of them, people are smart enough to not want it anymore. People are like, this is just more mobile trash. This is just more mobile garbage. I don't want it. But it's not just on mobile, it's on the Switch. Well, it doesn't matter because it's going to be a mainly mobile title. And no matter what, it's still pay to win. It's still pay a fee. You know, it's free to start, but it's still going to be pay a fee to get some bullshit to try and win. I would rather pay $60 for a quality product. I would rather pay $60 for Mario Odyssey, a complete, finished, and quality product. I would rather pay $60 for the Reignited Trilogy, a complete, finished, and quality product. I would rather pay $60 for... Uh, trying to name an Xbox game to not be biased here. I don't have an Xbox. Mm, for Halo Infinite. I know it's not out yet, but that's the only one I can fucking think of. I'd rather pay $60 for Halo Infinite. A complete, finished, and quality product. Even though that's still up for debate because it's not out yet. I would rather pay money for a complete, finished, quality product than enter for free and just have it pay to win garbage. I don't want it. You've lost my engagement. Don't care. Get out of here. Goodbye. Good day, sir. And most of the comments that you will see, I, I am purposefully leaving comments off the screen because of this last point, which is the big deciding factor. Because you know what? Let's play Devil's Advocate once more. Okay, fine. It's not Sinnoh Remake. It's not Let's Go Johto. Whatever. Don't care. Fine, fine, fine. Alright. It's pay to win mobile garbage. But you know what? You fucking Pokemon Go. I walked around with me. I walked around with my phone. I caught some Pokemon. I guess it's not all bad. Let's play Devil's Advocate. It's not all bad. You know what? Maybe. Maybe Pokemon can get it right. But then they announced their partner. Then they announced who they're partnering with. And that's Tencent Games. Yes, th thank you, Sunset Shimmer. My expectations for you were low, but holy fuck. If you're not familiar, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, just a quick educational lesson for you all now. Tencent is a Chinese publisher. They do not develop games. They are only merely a publisher. You see, if you wish to sell your game in China specifically, it is a Chinese law. This is a regulation that must be met in order to sell your game in China. Uh, if you wish to distribute your product in China, by Chinese law, you must have a Chinese publisher. You must partner yourself with a Chinese publisher of what you're trying to advertise. So in this case, we are advertising a game. So you must partner yourself with a Chinese game publisher. And the biggest one in the world is Tencent. And they have got more money than you can ever fucking imagine. Tencent is the equivalent of Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, 
all combined into one and then and then like a hundred times over because what Tencent does is they like to invest in as many products as possible and if they've invested in a product anytime a microtransaction is made or if it is a full priced game anytime that full price game is purchased Tencent gets a cut of it now like, let's just even say it's one percent let's play with small numbers all right so let, let's say they they uh, got in breath of the wild a sixty dollar game let's, let's pick a sixty dollar game one percent so you're getting sixty cents that's that's not a lot one percent of sixty dollars sixty cents that's not a lot but then make it two games then make it three games then make it ten games ten sixty dollar ten sixty dollar games all of a second you're getting six dollars per sale now let's take that up to a hundred you're getting your money back sixty dollars per sale now let's take it to a thousand then ten thousand twenty thousand a million two million ten cent has its fingers in more pies than you can ever imagine there are so many fingers in so many pies and all that revenue is free revenue but that's not enough for ten cent that's not enough for ten cent what ten cent also likes to do is because they now hold a share in the game because you went to china you needed to market your product so you needed by chinese law to sell a share of that product to ten cent and because ten cent is a stakeholder because Tencent is a shareholder they also get to decide what happens in that game so if anything is ever not up to Tencent standards or the Chinese government standards uh, Tencent as a shareholder can force you to change that can force you to do things there are many articles you know I'll just bring uh, one up for now there are many articles of Tencent using its power to censor games outside of China for the Chinese market. Uh, one of these is where they took certain cards in Hearthstone that had the blood effects because blood is not allowed in China. In the Chinese government's laws you are not allowed to show any kind of blood whatsoever. So this card has of course been changed. Thank you very much there, Mr. YouTuber, for explaining that situation. And they did this to multiple cards. But they couldn't change it in just China. Because, you know, it's a live service, so every version's got to have the same shit. So, this censorship was then rolled out to the rest of the world. To America, Europe, and that's where people get mad. Because Tencent is directly interfering with things outside of China then it goes one step further because not only can Tencent as a shareholder force you to censor yourself and change things around they can also force you to imply monetization into your games to a heavy degree to a absurd degree that can potentially kill your game I played Paladins I liked Paladins. Paladins was quite a good game. It was a good rival to Overwatch. I have gone on record many times and said that if they've gone in the right direction, Paladins probably could have even beaten Overwatch. They probably could have. But then we get into the future. Hi-Rez wants to get into the Chinese market, so they need a Chinese publisher. And they first want to market a mobile game just to break into the market 
of Paladin Strike, a mobile version of Paladins that's dead by the way now. It was literally just a stepping stone to get into China. Strike is fucking dead. But they got into China. However, that means that hi -res has had to make a deal with Tencent and Tencent is now a stakeholder and or shareholder within hi -res. And Tencent can order hi -res because they are a shareholder and if they don't like it, they will not be advertised in China. They can order hi -res to make monetization changes that will detriment everybody except the Chinese market. And this led to the creation of OB64, a patch so heinous that it killed Paladins in a single day. It nearly died in one single day. Tens of thousands of people left and most of them never returned. And it was only by such a cataclysmic fuck up that they reverted that. There was so much backlash, so much fuck ups only by an absolute, complete and total cataclysm was that completely reverted. However, however, just because it's reverted doesn't mean we're getting rid of all the other monetization. Yes, it's not going to be pay to win with the cards, but now all chests are going to be raised in price. All battle passes, oh, we're going to add battle passes, so that's a second monetization option. Uh, all those skins no longer cost gold, they cost crystals. See that? That's fucking crystals. And now veteran players are sitting on literal millions. No joke! I'm at 600,000 because I don't play it as often as people like blame. But veteran players are sitting on 600, 700,000 to literal, quite literal millions and nothing to spend it on because the free currency of gold has been completely and totally eradicated. There is nothing. Nothing. Not even something as simple as a common spray. You want a spray? That's, a, that's a 300 crystals that is. For a fucking spray. A fucking spray. Oh, you want a death stamp? That's 200 crystals. That's the premium currency. This shit should be fucking normal. This shit, the sprays, I know the death stamps are new, I remember when sprays were gold. I remember when you could spend gold for them sprays, but now Tencent's pulling the strings. And Tencent, they want it monetized. And that is where all these comments come in. And that's what's caused Pokemon Unite to die the day it was released. Let's uh, check out a few of these comments. Because most people are not even, not even mad about the game. Most people say it looks alright. You know, it's mediocre at best. It's okay. It's not it's not terrible. It's it's mediocre at best. It, it's nothing big. It, you know, it, it's average. However, it's the fucking partner. And then you look at the comments. This is this is one from uh, Manga. No Pokemon. Why would you team up with Tencent? People asking what's going on, Moon Knight responding. They're making a League of Legends clone with Tencent. And it's getting downvoted to hell. You see, this is the pattern that we're now going to follow. It's not just the, the game. The game itself is average. It's what is going on with the game. It's the people that are in control of the game because everybody knows the scum that Tencent pulls. We've got Cassidy here. Tencent. Mmm, that's gonna be a no from me. Again, no mention of the game being good or bad. Just the publisher. We go down to the cursed in quotation marks Tencent. Just, just the word Tencent. Nothing else. No, nothing like, again, nothing saying, oh, it looks like shit, what a, what a terrible concept idea, what a, what a bad, bad idea. No, they're not saying that. Everybody is bringing up Tencent. Let's go to, let's go to an actual, another person. Earth Captain. 
as a Chinese gamer, I always feel embarrassed of what Tencent has been keep has been keeping bringing into the game industry. I guess you know English isn't his first language. Fair enough. But once again, he's a Chinese gamer. He's not saying anything bad about the game. It's it's that company. It's Tencent. It's always Tencent. And wow, that's that's what we're going to get. That's what you're going to see on 90% of the comments. It's not about the game. The game is average at best. It's about the company that you partnered with. You know, and here's one more from the choked rat. You know, as soon as Tencent gets involved, it is not to be trusted. Again, people were willing to trust the Pokemon company, but as soon as Tencent got involved, that's it. Gone. Nothing. It's it's over. It, the game was over before it even begun. Because Tencent has a nasty habit of monetizing things to hell to the point where they can outright kill a game with the monetization and censor things to hell with uh, with Chinese regulations. And, you know, here's one from Narrell. Tencent whoring out League of Legends formula to everyone, huh? Again, it's not the fact that it's a League of Legends formula. That's a passing comment. Tencent whoring. It's always Tencent. It's going to always be Tencent. That is going to be the common theme running throughout all these comments that you will you will come across. It's not that the game's good or the game's bad. It looks like an average, mediocre game. But the company behind it is the thing that killed the game. Because they are known for being some of the biggest scumbags in the gaming industry. And... This harkens back to an issue that we had only a few years ago now with Gearbox Studios wanting to re-release Bulletstorm. And they were like, hmm, we need to re-release Bulletstorm. Who do we partner with? Ah, yes, those G2A fellows look pretty trustworthy. I'm sure G2A are an upstanding bunch. And look where that led. That's, uh, you know... That's why we don't see Bulletstorm anymore, because everybody boycotted Bulletstorm. Because nobody, it wasn't the fact that Bulletstorm was a bad game, it wasn't the fact that Bulletstorm was a horrible game, it was okay. I'm not saying it was the best, it, it was mediocre. You know, some people said it was actually okay, some people even like it, some people call it good. It's not the quality of the game. It was never the quality of the game with Bulletstorm. People were willing to buy Bulletstorm. People were willing to, to play that remake. But the second, the very second, that the words G2A got involved, everybody boycott it. Everyone. Because like Tencent, G2A is known for very, very despicable things where to the point where game developers... Yes, game developers, the people that make the game, say they would rather you pirate the game. Go on Pirate Bay. Go on fucking 4chan. Go on Hackers R Us. Go on any dubious site and pirate the game rather than going through G2A. The, look, 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 there, there's the fucking article. Go, buy, go, go do any underhanded shit you want as long as you don't support G2A. That's a developer telling you to pirate their game just so that G2A doesn't get money what does that say about G2A and that's like Tencent as we saw with the World of Warcraft analogy where they or sorry the Hearthstone analogy where they censored all of the card art to match the Chinese regulations the second you get in bed with a company like that it doesn't matter whether your game is the best game in the world that company can kill your game and I, I get why. Listen, I know why you did it. Because again, you wanted to distribute your games in China. And by Chinese law, you need a Chinese developer to, to or sorry, a Chinese publisher in order to market your shit in China. You were forced to do, well, you were kind of forced to do this. Because if you didn't, let's, let's go with the other route. Let's say 
you didn't. Let's just say it was an average mobile game. And you released it. If you hadn't have partnered with Tencent, that game's not coming out in China. That game is not coming out in China. It might be pirated in China, but that game's never going to be officially released in China due to Chinese laws. And so I understand why you did it, because you you were like, okay, well, you know, we don't want people pirating our shit. We want people to buy our shit. So we want people to legally buy it in China. But by doing that, you have inadvertently killed your game and it would have been better. And, you know, I apologize to any Chinese people watching this. I apologize to any, um, you know, like the, like the guy that commented where he says he feels embarrassed by Tencent. Because what I'm going to say now sounds really fucking harsh. And it's like, I'm sorry that you wouldn't be able to play the game by a legitimate means. I'm sorry that, let's just say we went the opposite road and this game never came to China, that really fucking sucks. You know, that that's a real fucking shame that this game would not come out in your country due to stupid fucking regulations. Like, that, that that's a real shame. But at the same time, like, that's the bed that you, that's the bed that China's made for itself. And as, as fucking harsh as it sounds, like, Oh, you don't deserve nice things because you fuck it up for everybody. That's that's kind of the the issue that like you face when you have to go come across Tencent. It's like, do I come across Tencent and tell Tencent to go stick it up their ass, which basically means I'm saying to every Chinese gamer, go fuck yourself. You don't deserve my product. You are not worthy of this product because I'm not willing to do a deal with Tencent. Or do you take that deal and, you know, you, you say, hey, listen, Chinese gamers, we care about you. You know, we want you to enjoy this product as much as anybody else. But by doing that, everybody else hates us. America, Europe, Australia, everyone else around the world hates us, as you can see by the comments of, uh, hey, you got into bed with Tencent and you just turned me off. You have just like said, oh, you're getting into bed with Tencent? Well, uh, as we can see by l last comment now, as we can see by this comment, I hate MOBA MOBAs. Okay, that's personal opinion. Ignore the first one. But, two, three, and four, I hate the Chinese corporation propaganda. That That's CCC. That's what that means. I hate the Chinese corporation propaganda and anything that owns such as Tencent. There's Tencent, there's the words. I hate pay to win, free to start trash. I hate mobile gaming. This game is awful and unwanted. I am never, ever giving this a chance. Freedom for Hong Kong. And that, you know, obviously last, last bit, a little bit political, but take that bit out. I hate Tencent. Again, it comes back, Tencent, Tencent, Tencent. So, what do you want to do? And that's, that was the stigma you faced. And that was the roll of the dice that you rolled. You had to take that gamble. You took that gamble. And this is, this is where you, this is where you landed yourself. With a bunch of memes saying that it's dead before it even came out. And not a single person outside China willing to give you a chance because you got into bed with one of the most despicable and heinous companies in the video game industry. Because, you know, we can sit here and we can laugh uh, at Bobby Kotick and Andrew Wilson and we can detest the things they do. You know, Bobby Kotick, the head of Activision, threw 800 innocent people out onto the street Despite boasting about record revenue. That's a dick move. What a fucking scumbag. Andrew Wilson. The CEO of EA. Well we know about Star Wars 2. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 con controversy with the loot boxes. But more importantly. The game that they had a direct hand with. Where it has been documented that Andrew Wilson was in the studio several times. Their big game anthem where they pushed people to the brink of suicide, where people were threatening 
to jump off the Bioware roof and there is a documented case of one Bioware employee just going into the back room having a mental breakdown and bursting into tears what a fucking scumbag we can rail on EA, Activision, Bethesda all we want but all these companies EA, Activision, Bethesda and their CEOs Bobby Kotick um, fucking Andrew Wilson they're children they are literal children compared to some of the vile shit that Tencent have pulled like you you think you think like 800 people out on the street despite record revenue is bad you ain't seen, seen fucking nothing until you research Tencent so that was the risk you took and this is where you landed yourself just a bunch of hate and a bunch of people memeing that your game's dead before it all came out. And that was the risk you took. And these are the results. And I hope you're happy, Pokemon. You know, I'm not going to say one way or the other. This was your decision to make. And now you've got to face the consequences. And if you're happy marketing to China and just, like, getting the Chinese money, fair enough. But just know by doing that, You've pissed off the rest of the world, and the rest of the world no longer is no longer interested in your product. And if you're annoyed with that, well, you you should have known the risk that you ran when you got into bed with one of the most heinous companies in video gaming, being Tencent. But yeah, so that's that's my thoughts on Pokemon Unity and why it failed. It didn't fail because it looked bad. Again, nobody. All the comments I show, nobody's saying it looks bad. Everybody's saying, oh, 10 cents involved. That's no from me. So, yeah, that's that's my thoughts. This was just a little podcast thing, you know, not much editing aside from the comments. And I'll see you all. I'm going to put this together when I wake up. It's 2 a.m. here, so I'm going to put this together when I wake up. And by the time you're watching this... Uh, you will probably be seeing me stream Ninjala, the first impressions of Ninjala on uh, on stream, because I I've downloaded the full version now. I have got the chapter one of the story, because we're gonna stream the story as well, and there'll be a first impressions video on that coming up uh, probably in a few days. Obviously, it's getting streamed tonight, and then I'll edit the highlights together. So yeah, look forward to that. But for now, that's enough from me. Uh, what do you think of this whole situation? What do you think of the fact that they got into bed with Tencent? What do you think of the fact that it's a mobile game that's free to start? Thoughts overall? Leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what your opinions on this uh, this uh, spice. Because the situation is very spice. I'd like to hear what your thoughts on the spice is down below. And obviously, if you like the video, leave a like. Uh, it does help out. And also consider subscribing. And there are links down below to the stream, so you can come watch that Ninjala stream live if you so wish. As well as a link to my public Discord where you want to come in and chat. A Twitter, so you can see when the stream's going live. And I'll uh, leave an annotation on screen to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel further. It does help out as well. But for now, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time with Ninjala, I guess.